After the long third step, which was step 13, now let's move to step 14, where we would want to do a very short step. So we already discussed about the importance of dispatcher servlet. We saw how dispatcher servlet receives it, identifies the right controller based on the URL, and controller executes the business logic. Controller returns back what and what modal. We have not tried it yet, but controller returns back the view name and the dispatcher servlet identifies the current view using what view resolver and then the dispatcher servlet makes the model available to the view i mean we have not seen that yet but we'll see that and executes it and dispatcher servlet would give a response back what response http response back and that's the flow which we discussed during the architecture of spring mvc so now what we'll do during this small step is add logging framework log 4j spring framework uses common logging by default we want to add log 4j so that we would be able to decide what logging level we want the Spring Framework to use. If we want to debug and understand Spring Framework more, it becomes very easier when we add a logging framework in. So let's add log4j in this. Step. I would want to add in log4j.jar. One way I can do that is to download it, put it in the build path of Eclipse, and then restart the server man and do everything manually. And the other way of doing it is by using Maven. Sure. Let's use Maven to add a dependency on log4j. So how do you find the dependency for log4j? Just go to Google and search for log4j Maven dependency and you'd be able to find it. The other way is just go into step 14 and log4j. So search for log4j, you'd see a dependency in. So the log4j dependency is actually quite simple. I, I, I wouldn't even need a snippet for adding it in. So it's all that you need to do is open up your pom.xml. So let's go over to pom.xml. I used control shift R. Go over to pom.xml. Go to the pom.xml tab and add in the dependency. So let's do this manually. So dependency, just like our packages. So a class has a package. A artifact, a Maven artifact has a group ID. The artifact ID for the group ID for log4j is also log4j. How simple is it? So that's the same log4j and now let's go ahead and add the artifact id artifact id for log4j is log4j this same and then this is the version so basically in the version we are saying which version of log4j do you want just like I, we are using 4.2.2 release so this is the latest i mean this is almost the latest version of spring web mvc not the latest version the latest version which is available is 4.2.4 and always one of the tips i can give you is just keep yourself a couple of releases down i mean a couple of minor releases down from the version which is being used so if you go to 4.2.4 release then you're kind of using the most latest version of spring i would actually stay a little down than that just so that any of the bugs any of the latest bugs somebody has played around with it and made sure everything is working fine yeah but if you want really to play around with the latest version go ahead and play around with it I'm sure you'll learn a lot by doing that. Okay, now going back to log4j, the version which we want to use is 1.2.17. So let's go ahead and add that in. I would, we have now added in the dependency to log4j. So for log4j to work, what we need to do is we need to restart the server. So I'll kill the server because I'm adding a dependency, a jar. So that means the entire war file needs to be built again. So I'll restart the server. That's not a problem. Um, let's do that after a little while after we have the properties so for using log4j we need to add in a log4j dot properties file so what i'll do is i'll add in a in the source main resources so source main resources so resources is one of the folders source main resources is one of the folders which maven by default you can if you put anything in here it would be available in the class path that's how maven defines it so Anything you put in source main Java is your source code. So anything you have in source main Java until now, we have put a lot of things in there is the source code. And anything you put in source main resources are the property files, the XMLs or anything else that you'd want to use during here. For example, the to-do servlet.xml, we could have put it in resources. That should not have been a problem as long as we point to the right place. And also, if you look at any other things, 
any other property files that you would want, you can put it in the resources. So now I would want to put the log for j dot properties in here. So the way I can do that is right click new file and I'll call this log for j dot properties. Very simple, isn't it? Log for j dot properties in the log for j dot properties, I can tell different things. So I can say I want org dot spring framework. I would want a lot of logging. I want everything to be logged. I can say everything. I can say or dot log for j. I mean log for j framework. I don't want I don't want uh, everything to be logged. But let's say let's assume there are five levels. I want configuration at level six. What I'll do now is I'll take this snippet from our step 14.md. So all that you need to do is search for log for j dot and this properties file comes up. So it's in source main resources log for j dot properties. That's where we have. I've copied this snippet in here. There are five important levels in log for j. error, warn, info, debug, and trace. The logger level is error. Then what would happen is that only when there's an error, there would be something in the log. When you put the error level at warn, you would see that there would be more information printed, but only warnings. And when you go to info level, it would also start printing a little bit of information. So when I'm loading an XML, I would probably print what is being loaded. And when the, you put level as debug, then it would start printing a lot more information. And when you put trace, it would print absolutely everything. So what I'll do during this particular step is now we have configured it as trace. So we can see what would happen when I put it at error. So I'm, I'll change this to error and start at the server. So let's put it at error and let's start the server up. You can also start up the server by using right click, run as maven build mvn, sorry, tomcat 7 colon run. This is kind of a shortcut which runs the last command which was run. You'd see that now there's very little information that is being printed. So what I'll do now is I'll change, clear the console and change it to trace. Let's see what's printed. Do you see that there is a lot of information being printed? Trace, debug, everything is being printed in here. One thing you should remember always is the fact that when I say something, when I log something as error, then when the configuration is trace, it would also be printed. So when I say something is trace, when I'm setting the configuration to trace, then it would print everything. So error, warn, info, debug, trace. When I say it's debug, it would print all the four, all these four kinds of messages. When I say info, it prints all these three and so on. So when I say trace, then every level of logging would be printed. And that's why you would have a lot of logging on the screen. So that's a brief video or brief step where we try to understand the logging framework.